For the second time, a jury is deliberating the fate of Neville Potter Jr. Both prosecution and defense attorneys wrapped up their closing arguments today in what has become a very emotional trial. The prosecution recounted how Marvis Shamaro and his friend witness Kyle Gums had been hanging out in an abandoned lot in Mandal when the defendant, Neville Potter Jr., allegedly drove up, demanded they get out of their car, and began shooting at them. Shamaro and Gums ran for their lives, said Assistant Attorney General Charles Willoughby Jr. After shooting Shamaro, the prosecution suggested that Potter came across Deal, who'd come outside to investigate. Then, Willoughby said, Potter hunted down and shot him, too, in hopes of eliminating a witness. Both Shamaro and Deal were shot many times, and each had received a bullet to the head. Willoughby said he wasn't simply hoping to injure or scare on his manhunt. He wanted them dead. Potter's defense attorney, Leslie Payton, came back and questioned the reliability of the witness's testimony. He reminded them that Kyle Gums had testified to Potter's car being dark blue when it had been black. He said witness James John testified to seeing a gun in Potter's left hand, then changed his testimony to say it had been his right one. Attorney Payton asked the jurors how what he called unreliable witness accounts could be enough to surpass a reasonable doubt. However, the prosecution reminded jurors that Potter had been picked out of a lineup separately by both witnesses witnesses. The St. Croix jury filed out to deliberate in the early afternoon. Dozens of friends and family members of both the victims, as well as the accused, waited anxiously outside the courthouse for news on a verdict for most of the afternoon. A verdict had not yet been reached by news time. Charlotte Hancock, News 2.